Hey guys, it's Kong here. Um, in this video, I'll be talking about my top Korean movies. The reason why I want to talk specifically about Korean films is because these past few years, Western cinema audiences has been exposed to Korean films. For example, in 2016, Train to Busan. Also, in 2019, Parasite, widely released in America, won American awards won Western Awards. That being said, if you saw those movies, right? Train to Busan, Parasite, and you, you love it, you want more of these Korean films that are really good, here are the top Korean films that I'll recommend personally. There's a lot of great films that are not on this list just because personally they're just they're just not my cup of tea. An example would be The Handmaiden. I saw that movie, great movie, you know, really well known. But again, just not my cup of tea. Before I go on my list, I already mentioned Train to Busan and Parasite. Obviously, you probably know of those movies or seen it. This video is more like a guide for you on what to watch in Korea cinema. Uh, they're not going to be on there, obviously. So again, top 10 that I personally would recommend. Not going to lie. It was really hard for me to pick a top 10. Just because I've been watching Korean cinema since I was 10. You know, growing up with siblings who watch Korean drama, sisters and all that. It was hard to try to recollect all the Korean movies I've watched that I enjoyed. But that being said, I just remember one movie. It's crazy. Recording live, I have my top 10 list. But I just remembered a movie that I really enjoyed that is so... It's an underdog even in Korean cinema, I feel like. But all right, so now I have 11. This is my top 11 movies I would personally recommend. Starting at number 11, that movie is Burning. Burning was released in 2018. For the record, I'm, just, I'm not Korean, all right? So I'm gonna butcher these names. Uh, so Burning stars Yoo Ah-in, who is the main character, Lee Jong-soo. Uh, he lives a really modest life not much going on until one day he meets this girl who's pretty interesting and out of the element uh, that he's interested in and her name is Shen Heimi she's played by Jiun Jung Seo so this guy living this mediocre life this mod modest life meets this lively girl they they hang out that's really his only friend and then he kind of notices that she also hangs out with this other guy. His name is Ben. He's played by Steven Yeun. You know, Glenn from The Walking Dead. A pretty well-known actor now. And so Ben is this pretty... He, he seems well-off, right? Rich. He acts a certain way. He dresses a certain way. Definitely an attraction, right? Out of Lee jung Su, the main character's league. Let's just say that, All right? I'm, obviously, I'm not going to talk about spoilers. So I'll, I'm going to try to explain it without bringing much into it. Essentially, it's a triangle relationship. And Heimi goes missing. And then things kind of spiral down from there. The reason why this movie I would recommend is it, it's one of those movies that leaves you thinking right you're in the main character's perspective and then till the very end it's not like any big bang this movie is a it's a stylistic slow burn movie really artistic movie that being said this movie is also not for everyone you kind of have to be in the mood for it it is pretty long over two hours and burning just leaves you thinking about the movie Thinking about the perspective. Thinking about your own judgments when you watch the movie from the main character's perspective. You're judging these characters and in the end, now you're like, oh crap, are my judgments right? And you rethink the movie. You rethink it all. That's all I'm gonna say about it. My number 10 movie that I will recommend is House of the Disappeared. It stars Yeonjin Kim. Yeonjin Kim, if you don't know her, she was one of the main cast and one of my most favorite TV shows, Lost. This movie, it first kind of shows you that it's a horror movie. It's a, ooh, it's a haunted house. You'll first watch it through that lens. And it's not going to be a perfect film until it truly reveals itself to you. And then everything clicks. That's all I'm going to say about it. Go into this movie blind. Everything you thought, that scene wasn't all that. Now you understand. Oh, okay, I get it. 
and that that's pretty good. All right, let's move on to number nine. Number nine is a Korean war movie called Taega Gi. It released a while ago, back in 2004. Mind you, this I've watched this movie for the first time when I was about 12 years old, and this movie has stayed with me since. Every now and then. I would think about that movie because it's just that good, right? It's on par with Private Ryan. So let's say if you, you've you seen all the American war movies, you've seen all the good Western war movies, and you, you're you craving for a good war movie, take a gee is it, man. Like that movie is, it takes you on a roller coaster of just worriedness because it's about two brothers that went into the war. I kind of forgot the specific situation. But two brothers who went into the Korean War and you know when it's two close brothers and they're in warfare and they're both at risk, you don't want them to be at risk. You don't want anything to happen to either of them. So it's it's a roller coaster ride where you're worried for them, it, it gets emotional, it gets it's action packed. So yeah, take a gee. Again, I watched it since I was 12 and I still think about that movie. Alright, moving on to my number 8 is A Tale of Two Sisters. This is also an older movie released in the early 2000s. It's a horror movie, but this is a really good horror movie. When I think about foreign horror movies that I love, A Tale of Two Sisters is one of them that pops up. A Tale of Two Sisters is just about two sisters who live with their dad and the dad has a girlfriend and there's something sketchy about that girlfriend or new wife I don't recall this movie has an American version called The Uninvited and honestly I think The Uninvited the American version was also pretty good but I personally prefer the original if you're into like ghost scares you want a good scare uh, you want a good horror more than like the ghost side the ghost genre of things a Tale of Two Sisters is it. And the reason why A Tale of Two Sisters is good is because the end, there's a switch that happens and it blows your mind. The American version, the the switch is the same, right? The, the bang, the thing that clicks and make, blows your mind is the same. But again, I just personally prefer the original better. Let's move on to my number seven. So my number seventh Korean film I would recommend is The Chaser. The Chaser is a crime thriller movie. It's about a police detective and he's trying to catch these killers, these murderers. One thing about Korean cinema is they do thrillers really well. They show you the mess up thing that these killers do to their victims. So you really hate these killers, you hate these antagonists. So you want the main character to catch them. I think for me why The Chase is also really good is because, man, the antagonists, they're so weird and creepy and scary, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because it, it shows you both the killers and the main character. And man, I'm not gonna lie, the, the antagonists are pretty scary. <laughs> but that's my number seven, let's go to my number six. So my number six is also a Korean crime thriller. It's called Memories of Murder. I'm sure you know of David Fincher's Zodiac movie that's based on that anonymous serial killer in America. Same thing here with Memories of Murder. It's based on a true story in Korea. There was a serial killer. And so the movie is based on that about the detectives who were trying to catch him while that killer was on a killing spree. It's just really good thriller. You know, you feel the emotions. You, you see the crime and you hate it. And then the ending, when you're done watching the movie, do the research on the ending if you don't get it. The thinking of the director is really awesome. So the director of this movie is Bong Joon-ho. He's like, personally for me, the Christopher Nolan of Korean cinema, right? I love this guy's movie. He directed Parasite. Some of these movies that I'll talk about on higher on my list, he's the director of. So yeah, when you're done watching it, you know, it's a great crime thriller in general. But being that it's, it's based on a true story, there are certain things that the director does specifically. And one of those things is the ending. And if you don't get it, do your research on it. All right, moving to my number five is called Mother. Mother is about an elderly woman who has a son with a mental disability. And there's a crime that happens in their town. It's a small town. Everyone knows each other, barely any crime. And then there's a night where this lady gets murdered. And so they're trying to figure out who it was. 
and everybody is thinking it's the sun and that's essentially the movie and this movie is just really good it's definitely like a detective crime thriller movie too but it's more slow burn but man, the, the ending just leaves you in deep thought. My number four is another crime thriller. What a surprise. <laughs> it's called I Saw the Devil. All right, I want to say this. So this is my top four Korean movie that I personally recommend, right? But I have only watched it once. And there's a reason why. I Saw the Devil is about this cop whose wife... Wait, I don't recall if the main character is a cop or not. But his wife got brutally murdered. And he wants to find revenge. Why this movie is so good is because it puts you through so many emotions. I was mad so many times in this movie. Because they show you the perspective of the main character and the villain. And I was so mad when the antagonist was doing his murdering. He's a serial killer, right? He's, he don't give a F. You know, he don't give a damn. And he kills people. And you hate it. You hate his gut. And the main character wants revenge. And because he's so stuck in revenge, he makes the dumbest decisions ever and makes you so mad. And that's why I can't watch it because I'll get mad. <laughs> and that's why it's so good because it's going to put you through an emotional roller coaster ride. The ending just sealed the deal, man. You know the saying, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. That's this movie, man. But yeah, essentially, man, because this movie makes me so mad. I can't hate that it did that because it was such a great film. So my number three is a Korean horror flick called The Wailing. The Wailing is about a cop. They live in a small town. People are dying one by one. The deaths are super weird, so odd. They're investigating why that is. What's behind those deaths is possibly a demonic entity. And so this demonic entity might be lashed onto his daughter. Because of that, he tries to save his daughter somehow. This movie is also a slow burn. You also have to be in a certain mood to watch it. It's really symbolic. It leaves you in deep thought. And this is one of those movies that when you're done watching, it stays with you. It sticks with you. You think about it again and again. When it finish, your mind is like, whoa. That's all I wanna say about it without giving much away. So my number two, Top Korean films that I would recommend for you to watch is The Man From Nowhere. It's an action film. Do you love Taken Part 1? The other parts kind of suck, but... Do you love John Wick? This is the Taken and John Wick of Korean cinema. But I personally love this film more than Taken and John Wick. It's about this mother and daughter. They live in a rundown apartment. And the main character, he owns the pawn shop in their apartment. The mother gets into like a really bad situation and that affects the mother's daughter and the main character has a good connection with the daughter. Bam! There he goes. One of the best action movies. <laughs> For real. One of the best gun slinging, duck killing action movie ever. The action scenes are badass. You're attached to the main character. You want to root him on. And again, like I said before, man, they made the villains such assholes that you want the main guy to find him and kill him. That's all I'm going to say about it. I've watched this movie plenty of times because, again, in general, this is my favorite action movie. Put it on your list with John Wick and Taken, man. But I personally think this tops them. We're up to my number one. And if you're already a Korean fanatic and you're just wanting to see what my list is, you already know which movie I did not bring up. My number one movie, top Korean film that I would recommend is Old Boy. And if you watch other videos, you probably see Old Boy on their list. There's a reason why. Old Boy is about this guy who, for some reason, gets kidnapped, gets imprisoned. His wife gets killed while he's in prison and someone framed him that he killed his wife. That's like the first 10 minutes of the movie, so not really a spoiler, I believe. And then he gets randomly released. It's a revenge movie. He wants to find out who locked me up. I'm gonna kill that guy because they probably killed my wife too. And that's it. that's essentially the movie. I don't want to give it away. This, this movie is so good. I watched this plenty of times too. This movie is also rated R. There's some long disturbing scenes in this movie. So don't watch it with your mom and your dad. But yeah, this movie is so good. It's so iconic. Alright, I'm gonna bring 
specific stuff, right? It's small things. It's not really spoilers. But because he was in prison for so long and he finally gets released, in prison, all they feed him every day for like the past 10 years was dumplings, right? So he gets out. He's like, all right, my first lead is the f the dumplings that I've been eating. They've been serving him the same dumplings for the past 10 years. So it's like, my first lead is the dumplings because I know how it tastes like I've been eating for the past 10 years. Boom. <laughs> That's like so badass. He goes around and he he tries out different dumplings to get the lead to where like, oh, this is the dumplings that I've been eating. So the bad guys are connected to this dumpling spot. <laughs> That's so badass. And there's also a badass scene when he first get released and He's been doing something in in jail. He has been practicing something when he was imprisoned. And when he gets released, he's like, all right, now it's my time to test what I've been practicing. <laughs> and then bam, it's like he put the theory to reality, right? It's just, I don't know, it's pretty badass, man. I'm not gonna say anything more because this movie's so badass. A lot of movies reference this this movie, but there's a specific scene in this movie that is so iconic. I see it frequently, even in like Western movies. There's this hallway scene and he's fighting a bunch of thugs and it's a one shot. It's a wide shot, so they're in a hallway. You're looking at the hallway sideways. Imagine a side scroller fighting game, right? And he's just fighting these guys. It's a one shot. <laughs> and that scene, it's like one of the most iconic scenes in cinema history. I watched Daredevil, the Marvel series. I, I see some influences that Daredevil did from there. There's so many other movies that is influenced from that one scene alone or is inspired by it. But yeah, it's it, it's a ride. It's a revenge story. It messes your brain up. I'll say that, right? When it gets weird, it gets weird. When it gets negative, it gets negative. When it gets badass, it's, it gets badass. Those are my top 11 Korean films that I personally would recommend. Again, I would recommend watching from the top list, rank number 1 to 11 because for me personally wise, when I watched all the good Korean cinema, I get a little bit down because like damn I, I love the thrill of the ride of these movies and I can't find another movie like it anymore. There are definitely other films that are not on my list that are also really good. It also fulfills your Korean film cravings but I don't know I just feel like the things like these 11 man. Put down some that I have missed that you would recommend. If you watch some movies that I recommended please come back and comment. Tell me your thoughts. Man, if you hated a movie, man, yell at me in the comments. <laughs> but alright, I hope you enjoy that. Subscribe, like the video. Thank you guys. Peace out.